Hello, in this video we're going to go over how to convert some artwork into a DXF file using DraftSight so that we can cut it on a CNC plasma cutter. So we're going to start by going up to attach and then clicking on the image option. We're going to select our image which is on the desktop. I'm going to hit open and I'm going to hit OK to place it and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm just going to place it and make it about the same size it was previewing. Once the image is in I'm going to click the edge of it and I'm going to go over here to adjust and I'm going to increase the fade by 50 percent and then I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say display order and then send to back. This will make sure that the image is behind all the lines that we're going to draw. We're going to start with the polyline tool. And what I'm going to do is start to work my way around the parts of the artwork that I want to trace. So I'm going to start by clicking. If I make a mistake, I can hit Control Z to back up. And when I get to the end here, I might make a few extra clicks so that when I convert it, it forms a nice point. So I'm going to keep going around. And when I get to the end here, I'm going to click the last point. If I make a mistake, I can hit Control Z. I can zoom back in and then make sure I click that last point. Then I'm going to hit escape and zoom out. And if I want, I can click on that and I can see any of the other points and adjust them if I need to. Now I've got a few more things I want to include. So I'm going to go back to the polyline. So I have this inside space here. And I'm going to click these to trace this little inner part of the eye. And this is just the same exact process. Hit escape when I'm done. And then I've got, let's say I want just this line right here. This will be a single polyline. that doesn't get closed. So I'll keep working my way around. Click my last point and then hit escape. So now I've got everything that I want. So I can delete the image if I want. I can also leave it. So if I hit control Z, I can leave it. And now what I'm going to do is convert it to a spline. So I have to use my P edit tool. So I type in P edit, I hit enter. I then select my outer loop and then down here in the command prompt, I have some options and I'm going to hit S to convert it to a spline. So I just hit S and then I hit enter. And then right after that, I hit C, enter to close it. And so what it does, it converts it to a spline and then it closes it. And I'll zoom in on this inner part and maybe we'll see uh, what it's doing. So I'm going to repeat the exact same process. I'm going to type in P, edit, select edit polyline. I'm going to click the polyline. I'm going to hit S, enter to convert it to a spline. And usually that last point, it leaves it open. And so that's why, let me zoom in here, that's why I have to hit C, enter to close it. So that looks good. So I can hit escape. And then my last line here, I'm going to type in P edit, hit enter, click my line, and then hit S, enter. 
to convert it to a spline and then hit escape since I don't need to close it. So now I've got my splines. If I want, I can click on them and then use my blue dots to adjust them a little bit more. The others look good, so I'm just gonna leave them. The last step is converting them to lines so that we can save it as a DXF file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the outer one first and I'm going to just type explode. So E-X-P-L-O-D-E, -E, enter. That's gonna break it up into a bunch of individual short lines. I'm gonna explode the other ones as well. So I'm just clicking on them, typing explode, hit enter, click on the spline, type explode, hit enter. But now I have all these individual lines and what I wanna do is use the weld tool to weld them together so that when I click on one, I get all of them. So I'll zoom in on the inside here. And all I have to do is type weld, then I'm going to click one of the lines, and that one is really short. And then I'm going to click once, move my mouse to get the selection box, click a second time, that selects all of the lines, and then I can hit enter. And I'll know it's worked, because if I click on it, I'll be able to see all of the other lines attached to it. So same thing, I'll work my way inside out. So I'll type in weld, I'll hit enter, I'll click one of these lines, and then I can actually, for the sake of time, I can select everything and then hit enter. And it will only weld it to the lines that are near it so it won't weld it to the other lines. So that worked perfect. One more time, type weld, hit enter, click one of my outer lines, and then select them all and hit enter. So now if I click on that outside, if I hit escape and then click on it, I can see that they're all welded as well. So now all I have to do is save it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to my folder or the, the menu up in the top left and click Save As. Then I'm gonna change it to the desktop where I have this DGL metal art folder. And I'm gonna save it in a folder called DXF Files. And then I'm gonna give it a name, I. Now I want a DXF, so the default is DWG. So I just click on DWG, and then I go up here, and I'm gonna select 2013ASCIIDrawing.dxf, and then hit Save. So now, if I minimize draft site, I can go look in my folder, my DGL metal art folder, and I can look in the DXF files folder, and I can see my I file right here. I have a flash drive over here in the list called store and go. And what I can do is click on this file and then just drag it onto the store and go and then let go and it will copy it to the store and go. If I click on the store and go, I can see that the file is there. The other nice thing is this folder is linked to Google Drive, so it can also sync to the machine that runs the plasma cutter as well. Hope that helps. Thanks.